Hey, what is going on guys, Vexner here. So today I'll be showing you how to make a lower thirds animated in Sony Vegas and Photoshop, just like you see in all of my videos. So it's a pretty simple tutorial, shouldn't take too long, but it's just a really nice clean look and just really add something to your videos and get your viewers just engage a bit more, you know, like, subscribe, whatever you want them to do. It just kind of prompts people to do that. It's a really nice thing to add to your videos. So I am doing this video per viewer request because I've seen a lot of people ask for it in the comments. So if you have any ideas for future videos, please leave me a comment down below as I really do read them and I do take your suggestions on board. So just do that. Also leave a like if you do enjoy this tutorial. And yes, Bridget, so let's get on with the video and we'll jump straight into Photoshop. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. So what we're gonna do is just click Create New. And then whatever resolution you usually export your videos at, you just wanna do that. So most people I'd say do 1080p, so we'll do that as this example. We'll just label this lower thirds. So 1920 by 1080, transparent background, and click Create. Now, most lower thirds are kinda of small and then in the bottom left-hand corner down here. So what we're gonna do is start off by right-clicking on the square tool and then click rounded rectangle. And then we'll just hold shift and drag a nice square like that. And then what we're gonna do is make these about 25, looks pretty good. Make the size of these about 150 pixels. That's good. And then the color for this example, I'm gonna be doing one that has a YouTube logo and then says subscribe. So we'll just pick a nice red. So we'll get the maximum red and then we'll just lower this down a bit so it's not too vibrant. That looks pretty good. And then we'll go Control J on that layer, and then Control T, hold Alt, drag down from the top, drag out to the side. It's pretty good, enter. Then what we're gonna do is right click, go back to a normal rectangle tool, and then drag one that's about the same size. That'll work. And then, so the height of that will make it say, 95 should be pretty good. And then the color of this, what we do, at least what I usually use, is I get a nice gray, but I use a sort of bluey tinge to it, so somewhere about here. So it's sort of like a charcoal with a bit of bluey tinge, and that looks, usually looks uh, pretty nice. So that looks pretty good. Control T on that layer. Drag that over. Drag that there. Go back to this layer, and we'll change this so it's a slightly less of a curve. Just gonna you know, get this right. It obviously depends also what you're writing. You might want this a bit longer or a bit shorter. And then that initial square will drag over the top of those two. So there you go, that's pretty, that's your initial uh, shape you've got there. And that's a pretty straightforward process. So just make sure this is just the right size. And there you go, that's pretty it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our text in here. So the fonts you wanna use is usually something nice and bold and clean. So what I use for my own videos is Uni Sans, so this is a nice big clean font. You can also try maybe Babas Nu or Gotham's pretty good, but just some nice big and bold and clean font. And then what we're gonna do is on the subheading, we'll write sub if you enjoy. And then because this is subheading, we'll make this thin and you know not bold. We'll get rid of this exclamation mark. And then what we're going to do is make the top layer a bit bigger, so they're about the same size. Looks pretty good. And then we'll go character tab and move this down a bit. There you go. Control T, move this to the center, perhaps a little bit smaller. There you go, that looks pretty good there. Now what we're going to do is get our YouTube logo. So you can just download this from you know, pretty much anywhere online. Just look up, up on Google Images. Drag that on there. And then we'll get Magic Wand Tool. Just remove that. Rasterize that. Control T. Double click on that. We want this white, just like with the text. Yeah, I think I forgot to mention that. The text, you want that pure white color to give that nice contrast and that nice clean look. We'll drag that there. Put that on top. And there you go, that is pretty much the basic look of it. Pretty simple, but really nice, clean look. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna label these, and then we need to export them. So this is the square text, gray rectangle, 
making a red rectangle. So now what we're going to do is we need to export these. So the way we're going to do that is we want them the full size of the document. So we're just going to hide all the other layers except the one we want to export. Go File, Export, Quick Export as PNG. We'll go to our desktop and we'll label this red rectangle. Then we'll do the same for the gray. Quick Export as PNG. And basically just go and do this for all of your layers one by one until you've got them all as separate layers. And then what we're going to do for the top one is do these as a single. So we'll just call this icon. So there you go, do that one by layer, layer by layer. And then once you've done that, we'll head over to Sony Vegas and we'll animate it from there. Okay, so here we are in Vegas. So what we're gonna do is click File and New. And then we'll call this 1920 by 1080 or whatever resolution made the Photoshop document. Just make sure this one is the same. And then I'll do 60 FPS. And then make sure you've got Disable Resample. The rest of it, you can just leave it default. Just click OK. And then we're gonna open up Desktop and we'll drag now four folders in and then we want to put these in the right order so we've got the icon on the top then we had the text we need the gray rectangle and the red rectangle and then it should look all correct as we saw in photoshop right there now the first thing that happens is this square with the icon slides up from the bottom so we'll move these out the way and we're going to keyframe this so what we need to do is click on this button here it's the event pan crop and if you're trying to keyframe and you find that what you're doing in this window doesn't line up with the preview window, just make sure you've got this one down here, sync cursor enabled. So we'll go to the very beginning, see zero, zero, zero. And then what we're gonna do is shift up arrow and hide that. And then we'll go a few frames over. So maybe 20 frames, which is a third of a second. Right click on this and hit restore. Now, when you're keyframing, if you wanna get that really nice smooth look rather than just a linear transition, you're gonna right click on your keyframes and just select smooth. And that'll just give you that nice sort of swaying wavy motion rather than the really sharp juddery that you see right now. Now, if we play this back, you can see it slides up. Now, my quality's kinda of bad. Keyframing in Vegas is always kinda of laggy. And it, but you get the idea, slides up. So then this ended at 20, so we're gonna leave a bit of a gap after that appears. So we'll go to maybe 30, or 40. And I'm just using, by the way, I'm using the arrow keys to go frame by frame across the timeline. And then what we'll do is we'll start the red rectangle because the way mine looks, the red rectangle, com rectangle comes across and the gray comes over the top slightly delayed. So this here will go event pan crop again but this time what we want to do is we want to check the mask option so what we'll do is that and then select rectangle tool mask we'll go from the side and then just before it starts there and then we might go to the full second mark or we might go 110 now with these speeds it's really up to you some people prefer a slower sort of animation whereas i prefer a quick snappy feel to it it really is up to you, but I suggest you just kind of muck around with a bit until you get the timings right and to the way you feel they look good to you. So that's pretty good there. If we go to the beginning and we play, that slides across just like that. Very nice. So we'll go to where, actually what we'll do is we'll go back here and we'll get the gray and we'll do the exact same thing. So mask tool, rectangle from the edge here. And then in the timeline, we'll go to 110. And then click on this, drag it out. And I think the other was actually a bit slow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the one second mark and I'll put the keyframe there. Then I'll do the same for this, just because I feel like it was a little bit too slow. Now, as I said, the gray is delayed. So what we'll do is we'll just go maybe 10 frames over and we'll drag the gray one there. So it just starts a bit later. Then we can do after they both appear, the one second mark, we'll go a little bit more across. We can drag our text and top left corner here, we can just put a nice fade on that. Last about half a second. 
And then I'd say make these last for a little bit just so that, you know, viewers can actually read them. So I'll go to maybe the eight second mark. And then we'll just drag all these to the end like that. And then put a fade on all of those nice even fades so it all disappears at once. And then if we play this back from the beginning here, slide the cross and your text appears. Really nice, really simple effect. And that's pretty it. Now, of course you wanna go and do these in a different color and a different logo. So I use red for subscribe. I use purple for the like, you know, hit the like button. I use light blue for Twitter, all that sort of stuff. So just make these one by one. And then obviously any footage you have, you just put underneath these layers here. So yeah, that is pretty much it guys. Hopefully you have enjoyed. Remember if you did, please leave a like down below, or a comment letting me know. Subscribing is also really appreciated if you want to check out all my future uploads and check all my social media below. And that's pretty much it. So I hope you've enjoyed. I hope this tool has helped you. If you have any questions, uh, you can leave them down below, but I won't always get back to you just because time is quite a big problem for me and it does take a long time to reply to all of your comments. So if you do see someone down below in the comments who's having a problem, please help them out. Just help each other out a bit. It really helps me, saves me some time, and you know, you guys get your solutions. So that's pretty it. Hope you've enjoyed. Hope you've liked this tutorial, and I'll see you next one. Bye, guys. Thank you.